Hello students, welcome to the session of Remote Sensing and GIS. We are going to discuss today related to coordinate system and it's important and why coordinate system is given to our world map or to our world, right? So here the very first important thing which we can say is known as projections. What is the meaning of projections here? We have our earth is a circular, ellipsoidal or the correct name is geoid. So what happens? We convert the curved surface to the flat surface. Why? Because we want the measurements into units like area, square kilometer, meter square, right? But right now on the globe or on the surface of earth that is circular or geoid, what is the unit? It is latitude and longitude, right? And unit of that is minute degree second. So it is necessary to keep the projection. And if we give the projections, then only we can have the unit conversions what we require, right? So that is known as projection. Converting the circular or the geoid shape into the flat curved shape, right? That is known as projections. Now, coordinate system. Basically, coordinate system means data is in horizontal and vertical, that is your latitudes and longitudes. And that unit is degree, minute and second. But now we are going to provide the various coordinate systems, right? And we will have to see or we can see that what is the unit of the map or unit of the globe of earth which we are flattening it, right? So coordinate system is basically geographic coordinate system or the projected coordinate system. Now, what do you understand by geographic coordinate system? Geographic coordinate system, you can see here, that means it is degree, minute and second. When I say the projected coordinate system, its unit will be always meter square, mile, yards, acre, inch, foot, whatever you require is the unit conversion that can be done in the projected coordinate system, right? So we are transferring the latitude, longitude, that is degree, minute, second, into the units of square kilometer, meter, square, yard, and inch. That is known as converting geographic coordinate system to the projected coordinate system. And that is what is coordinate system, right? Now, geographic coordinate system is the latitudes and longitudes, that is degree, minute, and second. We have various geographic coordinate system are also there that were derived in the ancient time. But it is not much in the use right now because we want to do the calculation. We want the various units of our calculation and that is only possible in the projected coordinate system. Right? So we have the projected coordinate system. Now you can see here there are various projected coordinate system. That is cylindrical, conical, polyconic, right? Then we have various other numbers that is planar, azimuthal, zenithal. These are the projections, right? Now we need to decide that which projection will give us a good result for when and what calculation we do on the map or on the world map or on the world, various continents, right? So we need to do that. We have x values and y values, right? That is northing, easting, south, west, everything is being mentioned. And now we are representing the earth's surface from 3D to 2D, right? We are converting from 3D to 2D. So from the globe, we are converting to the flat surface. And that is known as, known as projected coordinate system. Now you can see here how it is converted, the developable surfaces. Can you see the surfaces, the pictures, what I have shown here is what? When you are converting, you are converting purely into the way that you are flattening it, right? That is known as developable surfaces. Now, the very important terminology here derives is datum. What do you understand by datum? That describes the position, relationship, reference to the surface, to position on the surface of Earth, right? What is the actual position on the surface of Earth? That is known as datum. Right? And we are using right now for India, for our continent, is WGS 1984. That is what is datum. You have heard this word datum. It is very famous. We are keeping one reference when we are converting the surface from circular, that is from the globe to the flat surface. Right? That is known as datum. 
So we can get the relationship and the relative position of on the surface of earth. That is known as data. Now there are various other uh, projected coordinate systems you can use that is depending on universal transfer mercantile. You can see UTM, right? And UTM you can see how is whole continents, every continent, whole world is divided into the perfect latitudes and longitudes with the equal size. Can you see that? Right? So that is universal transverse mercantile. This is the name of the projected coordinate system that you have to give to the data what you are using in the GIS environment. Right? So this is known as universal transfer market. It is basically the cylindrical type. When the globe is passed from cylindrical, I want to open that globe into the flat surface and you can see here that how is whole world divided. Right? So this is how universal market is used. There is other important topic which is related after the projection is known as georeferencing. And what do you understand by georeferencing word? Geo and referencing means we have given the projections, we have given the units, right, from degree, minute, seconds to meter square, kilometer, we have given that. Now we need to give the georeferencing. What is the meaning of georeferencing? Let's see that in detail. It is a process of converting an image file coordinate or page coordinate to a file map. Now, georeferencing basically means that I am giving the particular location to that file, to that image, right? Now, the very best example, if I can give you, you all are aware when you are clicking a picture in your mobile phone, Know that the location service is on in many of the phone now we keep a location service on why we are keeping it because we because we can get the location particular location of that area and that is known as georeferencing right so i am giving the particular location towards that file that can be a pdf that can be an image that can be a data which is done in autocad and i have a hard copy of it or a scanned copy of any image i am giving it a particular location towards that that is known as georeferencing process right so a scan map have a origin points right and raster where each point is map is identi identifiable by the map file coordinates, right? So you can see here we are converting that and we are giving some coordinate system. Look here, I have shown here the earth and when it is converted, you can see the latitudes and longitudes and it falls on the place where I am highlighting it. So if it is an image of Africa or India, from the earth, it should place on Africa and India only. That is known as georeferencing. Any random image clicked by you can also be set on the world map. And that is known as georeferencing process. Geo means related to earth. And referencing means with reference to earth, we are giving some unit towards it. That is georeferencing in a very simple sense. Right? Now here it is a georeferencing system. You can see here we have place name. When we say address to anyone of our residence or of our workplace, we have a place name. We have postal codes towards that. Yes, we have the landmarks. You know that some addresses ask the landmarks of it. Right? We have the cadastral, the street names we say right the plotting scheme or plotting name or plotting numbers are also given because these are the unique things and we locate one place and address that is a georeferencing system that how it works why we provide the georeference so any random data when you are working in the gis software or any other that is qgis or map window or any or headers any software you work on with this environment it should be a georeference to find it should be a properly given coordinate system file. Then only that data will particularly fall or do the analysis of that particular place. If I want to do the analysis, for example, from India to Gujarat to Surat, then I have the coordinate, perfect coordinate of reference of Earth of Surat, that is latitude and longitude. And then I'm converting the unit into meter or square kilometer or yard or mile whatever unit I want. 
so that is the georeference what I have done first of all I am giving the relation position on the earth that where Surat is located and then I am giving the unit towards it that is the georeferencing system so this is how georeferencing goes on right the address the postal codes are different from each and every area that is the georeference that if it is for example a satellite area where ISRO is located is 380015 is located for the satellite area right so that is a unique id that is a georeference to think that if i put a id postal code 380015 for example it stays on the satellite area so this is what is georeferencing system right the important thing is the data inputs and outputs which is very important in the environment of GIS. So you have two types of data that is spatial data and the non-spatial data. When I talk about the spatial data, it is always related to Earth. It is always related to the latitudes and longitudes or to the particular location of it. That is known as spatial data. And when I talk of non-spatial data, what does it mean? It is an attribute table. It is a characteristics of the data. Right? So there are two main types of data. The first thing, the very most common types of general source of spatial data are the hard copy maps, scan maps. We have the aerial photographs, right? These are the hard copy data, but that have the spatial location towards it. When I have an image, I know where it is taken. So where it is taken is the location and that is why it is a spatial data, right? Spatial means latitudes and longitudes. Similarly, when I talk about the attribute table, what do you understand by attribute table? Attribute means the characteristics. Right. So we have the elevation data, we have the bathymetry data, we have the depth data of various regions. Right. We have the raster data also, but we have to give the location that is georeferencing is important when we use the raster data. We have the text files also, but if I have the location towards that, I can use that file also. So this is a data structure and this is how it works on. We have the data outputs also and you all know there is a topographic map, density map, dot density maps, cadastral maps, land use and land covers. These are the output from what we get from GIS. As we have the various digital data of our country, we can generate this type of output. We can solve the various problems related to our city and this is where GIS works on. right? So basically we have the updated data. We have various Excel files also. So in that we can do the analysis using various GIS tools and techniques, right? So the major question comes around for the data quality and management. Yes, we require the precision, the accuracy, consistency, transparency, timeless, timelineness, validity, and uniqueness. Data should not be wrong. It should be accurate data. It should be precise data then only it is useful, then only any analysis we do, it is helpful in our day-to-day -day life being a civil engineer. And this software is the upper version of AutoCAD. And this software is related to the spatial data that is related to the space. And any random analysis we do with the space is what we have latitudes and longitudes. So this is the best tool right now or the best software even I can say we can use in the field of civil engineering. We can have the maps, we can generate various reports, we can do various analysis what we require. So the things which needs to be done tediously can be done very easily using this. But what is the main source we require? We require the spatial data that is the latitude and longitudes and then we can do any random analysis what is required in the field of civil engineering. I guess you are clear with this. I can simply say that there is a local action right for the global vision. This is a very simple tool and a very modernized tool which is used in the field of civil engineering. Thank you.